and how much the power at B is actually trying to get this power back. First of all, the key to the Bible is to understand that the Old Testament is talking about advanced technology, very, very advanced technology. The crystal, the power of the sun gods, the power of Atlantis, which was brought out of Atlantis, brought to Egypt, and eventually brought to the Temple of Solomon by Moses. And the other side of the Bible, the New Testament, is talking about the living ark, the purity of heart, the purity of intent you have to have to be with the ark. And it's actually when the two are put together that we have the new level of civilization. When the technology, the external technology, matches our internal knowledge, and the internal knowledge match the external technology. It is not all internal, like spiritual, you know, commonly think of. And it is not completely external, like most physicists think of. But it is both internal and external. That's the feedback. So when the, uh, when the, uh, much later, uh, it seems like there was a Jewish contingency in France that believed that they were the direct descendant, descendant of Emmanuel, the Cathars. And the Cathars, I think, was it the Cathars? Yeah, I believe so. Um, they were looking for the Ark of the Covenant. This is a large Jewish community in the middle of France that nobody knows how they got there. There's a lot of books now being published saying that actually Emmanuel, after his crucifixion and his revival, went through India and into Europe and resettle in France and that Cathars were truly the bloodline of Emmanuel. In any case, true or false, they believed they were and they were looking for the Ark. They might have had very ancient documents that were brought there by the groups that settled the Jewish community there. They started an order of knights to look for the Ark. That order was called the Knights Templar. The first name they were given was the Knights of the Poor because they were very poor and their insignia was two knights on one horse because they couldn't afford a horse for every knight. They were commissioned by a priest, a Qatar priest, to look for the Ark. Well, after years of research and so on, they came to conclude that the Ark had to be in Jerusalem somewhere, under the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. They, conjun they conjured the armies of France okay they convinced them to go and take jerusalem and as a result started the crusades this is history the crusades were described in the tales of the search for the holy grail they couldn't talk about the Ark directly because of Inquisition. So they called it the Holy Grail. And in the first edition of that story, they call it a crystal stone. 
later on describing it as a cup which had two vortices on each side. And so they went across all the countries they needed to go across to go to Jerusalem. They fought their way through all the way, generating huge amount of uh, difficulties. And eventually got to Jerusalem and took over the ancient city of Jerusalem. This is historic. They were there and they occupied Jerusalem for many years. For seven of those years, the Ninth Templar themselves settled right beside the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and dug and dug and dug tunnels that are still there today. But because this is Islamic ground today, the temple, it, the mount, the mount, it's the rock of foundation is right under the dome of the rock in Jerusalem, which is Islamic, is under Islamic control. The Islamic population goes there on pilgrimage, turn around the rock where the ark used to be placed inside the temple of Solomon. They're, they're venerating the exact same thing as the uh, Jewish tradition. And they're all fighting. Amazing. In any case, those tunnels are still there under the ark, under the temple mount. They're not accessible. You can't go there. They're blocked and they're heavily guarded. In any case, the Knights Templar dug for seven years and found zilch. Well, they found a lot of documents, and that's in history books, but they didn't find the Ark. It just happens that while they were there digging, a high pre, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the king of Ethiopia was um, in exile. There was a revolution in Ethiopia and was brought in exile to Jerusalem. And when he heard the Knights Templars were looking for the Ark, he went to them and said, I have the Ark. It's in Ethiopia. Now, how did that happen? There was a very well-known route along the Nile that went down the Nile through the Blue Nile into Lake Karnos in Ethiopia, Taos in Ethiopia. And sure enough, in Ethiopia, you find a high population of ancient Jewish tradition, which scholars never knew where the Jews came from, why they went to Ethiopia. Most likely what happened is that the Essene temple became unstable, became dangerous. It became dangerous to leave the ark there. So they decided to take it down the Nile. They did and they eventually settled at Elephantine Island on the Nile. Um, and they found a, uh, an Hebraic temple there, which you know, in uh, Jewish tradition, you're not supposed to build a pet temple unless it's the temple to place the ark in. So wherever you find an, an ancient Hebraic temple, the ark had to be there. So you find that temple in the ac appropriate times being built on Elephantine Island. And then it stayed there for a long time, hundreds of years, until it became unstable there too. So they brought it down into the Blue Nile, into Ethiopia. And in Ethiopia, on that lake, you find a very ancient Hebraic temple having been built. And all the priests there say that they used to have the Ark. And then eventually the Ark was brought to St. Mary of Zion in uh, uh, Axiom, Ethiopia, where it's supposed to be to this day. It's a little chapel that's heavily guarded by the uh, Ethiopian army. 
And so the Knights Templar actually went down the Nile and what they did is they made a deal with that king. That king actually is the father of the Rastafarian tradition. That's how deep this goes. The Rastafarian tradition is actually directly linked to the history of the Ark. And if you talk to Rastafarians that are really uh, scholarly involved, they will tell you that the Ark is the center of their uh, worship. So the Knights Templar, isn't this amazing? The Knights Templar went down the Nile with that king and because they had the control over the European armies said, we'll give you back your country. That's not a big problem for us. We've got guns. They have, you know, arrows and lances. And so they brought, they went down the Nile. Actually, they didn't have quite guns at the time, but they had more advanced technology than the Africans. And um, they give, they fought for that king's country, and in exchange, the king gave them access to the ark. And there, in Ethiopia, you find ancient traditions that talk about blonde high, blue, uh, blonde air, blue eyed people, Europeans coming in during those years, liberating the country and building all sorts of things. Now when, um, when you find these things they built, you know they didn't build this with conventional means. Because when you find the things they built in Ethiopia, you find that those are churches. One of them is a church that's a big Knights nice Templar cross type of structure that is not built, actually, it's cut into the stone, like laser cut into the stone. And then it's cut inside it and then emptied out, this huge chapel, right? Um, you know, basically cut, like sculpted right out of the stone. Only one person has been able to make to interview um, the guardian of the ark, the guardian of the ark today. One priest in Ethiopia is chosen to guard the ark, and he has to be pure of heart. And when he's chosen to guard the ark, he never leaves the chapel where the ark is. From that moment on. He stays there for the rest of his life. That high priest gave one interview, and he gave it to Graham Hancock, and it's in the book, The Sign and the Seal. And in the interview, Graham says, what is the power of the ark? And the high priest, well, first of all, he says, what was it? The first, how was it the first time you went in front of the ark? And the high priest said, it was terrifying. And Graham Hancock says, why? And he said, because the ark is an object of fire. That means it radiates. And then he said, what's the power of the ark? And the high priest pointed across from the chapel in Ethiopia. And across from that chapel in Ethiopia, a huge pillar, some of them 500 tons pillars of granite that were erected, just like Egyptian obelisks. And he said, this was not done with the power of man. This was brought here with the power of the ark. So he actually says directly to Graham Hancock that the ark has gravitational capabilities. Go ahead. Um, what do you think is Interestingly, when they arrived in Europe, the first thing they did 